The other part of this presentation that I'll go over um, is mostly conceptual, and it also will help you for the lecture part of the course. And so, uh, you know, Ben has been Ben Ben worked very hard, and he was very kind enough to put together a really really good study guide for understanding uh, st understanding the terminology in the context of what you just learned from the PowerPoint. Okay, so given a tree, there are certain traits that unify clades or groupings of animals sharing a common ancestor. Um, and there are special terms that go along with what, are the, what the possibilities are when you're generating a tree, some that work, some that don't. And so what this latter part of the PowerPoint is just going to be um, sort of a review of terminology. <clears throat> I'll read these, give you a couple of study tips, and then go through this this presentation, this part of the presentation. So, and hopefully this will help you understand a really basic concept for understanding evolutionary, or constructing evolutionary hypotheses about relationships. Okay? Um, first things first, traits. Okay, so traits are what we use to, to define relationships. And um, these traits can be either ancient or derived. If they're ancient, they're called plesiomorphies. If there are multiple species that share that ancient trait, that trait is called a symplesiomorphy. If the trait is derived, so it has changed relative to the ancestor, then um, they're called apomorphies. If that apomorphy is unique to a lineage, so if you had a tree and it was it was unique, like no other lineage on your tree had it, it's called an autapomorphy. If, on the other hand, you had an apomorphy that was shared, all the groups of animals you're looking at share a common ancestry because they possess that trait, that's called a synapomorphy, or in other words, shared derived trait. Okay, and uh, these synapomorphic traits are homologous, meaning they come from a single ancestor and they were inherited. They're not analogous. Analogous implies convergence or convergent evolution, and that convergence really doesn't help you at all when you're trying to re reconstruct evolutionary relationships. Synapomorphy is, is all about homology, and a homologous trait is a trait that's shared, by, shared across lineages that unify a single group, and that group inherited that trait from a common ancestor. And synapomorphies are not about analogy. Okay, so here are those terms. A, a, a simplified way to learn these terms is, is I, I try to help you guys out by kind of showing the terms here, showing similarities, and hopefully helping you identify the differences. So morphy is a root that's shared by all the terms that are useful in generating or reconstructing a, an evolutionary tree. Morphy because the first evolutionary trees were built on morphology or anatomy and physical structures. Plesio implies ancient. So the best way to understand this is think of like, you know, Loch Ness, plesiosaur, ancient dinosaur. So plesio is ancient. Sim plesiomorphy means sim means similar, so shared, shared plesiomorphic traits. So plesiomorphy is a term, sort of an umbrella term, in which it includes a, a particular case when it's shared. And when it's shared, there's a formal term called sim plesiomorphy. In contrast, if you had a trait that is derived, a general term, a general broad umbrella term, for derived traits is called the apomorphy. And apomorphy is a term that, that again, is sort of an umbrella term. It's broad, and within it, there are two specific terms that you can use to help you identify um, the characteristics of traits. Sin apomorphy or ought apomorphy. Sin apomorphy are shared across groups, unify clade. Autapomorphy is unique to a particular lineage, so it doesn't really help you in forming clades, and it really doesn't help you in forming trees. But again, apomorphy is an umbrella term that includes these two special cases. When it's shared, it's an apomorphy. When it's unique, it's autapomorphy. And plesiomorphy is an umbrella term that in, in the case where it's shared, it's called symplesiomorphy. 
Okay, so please remember for ancient, shared, ancient, derived, shared, derived, unique, derived. Somewhat of a digression. You might see this term homoplasy, or this is synonymous with analogy. Traits that result from homoplasy are a product of convergent evolution. To draw the distinction here, because you don't want to try to incorporate these kinds of traits to build a tree. It's these ones that are most important. So knowing this, let's use an example. So um, if you were given this tree and you were asked to describe it given those terms, how would you do it? Okay, so you have acorn worm, which is a common name for a hemichor uh, species of hemichordate. And yeah, you have tunicates, amphioxus, hackfish, and lamprey. Hackfish and lamprey belong in craniata. Um, amphioxus, hackfish, and lamprey belo belong in a group that's defined as semitochordata. And the chordates more generally include these four groups. And these are traits. And each of these traits are synapomorphy. Pharyngeal slits is a synapomorphy that unifies this clade, notochord, the snape morphy that describes this clade. Myomere is the snape morphy that helps describe this clade, brain case. And vertebrae is actually not a snape morphy in the way at least this tree is drawn. A vertebrae, since lamprey here in this tree is given, is just a single lineage. This is actually a case of all type of morphy. All right. However, if you were to have multiple different species of lamprey over here, all of a sudden, this term becomes a synape morphy. So that, that kind of points you to a really important aspect of these terms. These terms are highly context dependent, and these following slides will. All right, so generating a tree from the bottom up. Synape morphy of groups for angel slits, okay, and chordates. Chordates is drawn as a single lineage. The notochord is an otapomorphy of chordates. If we were to um, diversify this, this evolutionary tree, the pharyngeal slits becomes a, a symplesiomorphy now because it's shared among different lineages. Notochord is a synapomorphy of tunicates, that, that, of, sorry, of tunicates and semitochordata, and myomeres is an odd-type morphy. Um, so moving forward, if you were just to re, reconstruct this tree, ultimately you can get that, you can, you can get at that final tree that you saw in the beginning, but the properties of these traits, whether they were symplasiomorphies or plesiomorphies, whether they were synapomorphies or typomorphies, changed given the context. So know the terms, know the terms, know how they're related, and know how to distinguish them from homoplasy. Okay? Thanks for listening.